for those who don't know, I spent quite a lot of time in the UK waste sector, particularly the waste plastic sector. Uh, more recently got involved in, in doing a kind of forward projection on what should be happening to waste plastics in the UK over the next decade or so for the British Plastics Federation. Um, comments that may help, and I guess I should feed this back to Bill. There's been quite a lot of reports in the waste sector about the actual need for more incineration capacity. Huge, big, controversial disagreements about the forward projections because we all know that extrapolating grass forward is a really risky thing. Mm. And some think it's just a total waste of time building another huge capacity item, which, which the assumption in all the business models that you're going to charge about £100 a tonne gate fee for someone to bring stuff to your incinerator. Well, that goes completely the wrong way if there's excess capacity, so that doesn't work. Um, mm. The second point is the energy production. I think that people with a thin level of understanding Hmm. maybe maybe most of our members of parliament um think that somehow if you burn this waste you get this somehow sort of amazingly free energy and power and i had some of my own chemical engineers do a report on the carbon cost of every kilowatt generated by burning waste that contain plastics hmm. it was actually much better to run a gas turbine for half an hour because the efficiency of power you get per kilo of gas put in is much better you have to do like two and a half times as much waste plastic through an incinerator to get this so-called free energy. Mm. Um, the other point that no one ever really talks about is a, a third of the waste ends up as this sort of bottom ash. Mm. They never, ever talk about where it goes. There must be masses of bottom ash. Mm. I think a lot of it ends up in the cement sector. Mm. You ask a big waste management company where their bottom ash goes and they'll close their mouth up. They won't talk to you. So those are the sort of yeah. three comments, really, which I guess if I have a discussion with Bill and feed him back on that. but That, that would be excellent, because I think there, there are so many, it sounds to me like there are so many hard, technical, rational arguments like that that need to be made. It's not just NIMBY saying we don't want this on our doorstep at all. It's just saying this just doesn't have a place in an economically business sense and in an environmental sense and and if, if those arguments can be made very strongly as they seem to be being made elsewhere we may have a chance of of overturning this so yeah i think that would be really helpful so thanks yeah, Mike yeah the, the food waste rollout because in wilts we still don't really have food waste anywhere else where they roll out food waste there's suddenly a massive change in the amount of material in the black bin residual waste bin and it actually then doesn't need incinerating so much so there's yeah. loads of really good arguments all right enough on that yeah no thank you yeah um okay uh well shall we move on then to your item then keith if that's all right if we're ready to do that so so keith as as you know has been working on or leading our energy or oh, business engagement um group and so Keith's going to give us a quick update on that. So, um, do you have you got screen sharing rights, or do you want to? I need someone to give me yep. screen oh, share right. rights. I think because I like to talk to slides as it stretches yep. my otherwise rambling brain. Oh, have good, it. I've got it now. Excellent. I'm right. I'm hoping you can see. I'll see slides. Have you got yep. a lot of green on your? screens everyone good business engagement plan for member update that must be the right slides then mm -hmm. i won't take long i think i need five seven minutes go for it uh, go just to reiterate for those who've not seen it before because we had a bit of a plan to engage with businesses and try and reduce their climate impact across the county made a good sense to have some sort of set of objectives and priorities i won't run through them all but to begin with the absolute focus is on doing these three things. Try and create some sort of report that highlights both good and bid, bad practice by businesses in the county. Um, pull that together into some sort of relevant set of data about the climate impact that those organisations are having. And whilst we're doing it, we hope to identify good tools that we can disseminate and take to businesses to help them work on how they better manage their own climate impact of doing business in Wiltshire. I put this up before, but recently I did a bit more work. This is a, a summary 
In fact, I think it's probably the only bit of hard data in the Wiltshire Council hmm. emergency climate saving plan. It's one of the few pages that has some numbers on it. The uh, Department B's business, energy and industrial strategy produced this data. And a few weeks ago, I luckily spoke with the man at Ricardo Consultancy who spent since 2005 pulling it all together. And he said, you know, they've got this estimate which suggests that about a third of the uh, impacts around the county are from the act to do in business. But of course it says transport's 45%, lumps it into one big pot called transport. Mm. I got some data which analyzed the type of vehicles on the motorways, the roads and the minor roads. And then I did some estimates saying, well, most HGV heavy goods vehicles are probably doing transport for business. And a certain amount of lights goods vehicles are actually moving business stuff around, if it's a plumber or a baker's van or whatever. And then when I applied that to it to try and allocate the transport to whether it was private transport or business related transport, I got a big slice of the transports actually to do with business. The outcome from that simple bit of analysis that over half of direct climate emission in the county are related to the act of doing business. Mm -hmm. Three main work areas we're trying to get stuck into with the work group, research and analysis, collaboration, and actually engaging with businesses, really focusing on the first one at the moment, quite a lot of work being done on getting on with the research and analysis of the big hitter firms. Collaboration work started, but need to do more. Actually engaging with businesses, don't really think it's that credible until you've done your homework and got your data, so that'll follow. We put a set of objectives together. Once again, just put a red line around the ones we're focusing on at the moment, get the data together, come up with some method methodology for actually doing a bit of performance analysis about how different businesses are doing. So in terms of identifying the big hitter companies, i.e. firms operating in the county who have a significant climate emissions impact, we had a bit of data that was pulled together a couple of years ago from Wilts Council. The business rates payer, 13,300 firms listed, quite a good piece of data. It's not necessarily true that the bigger rate bill equals the bigger climate emitter, but it does give you some measure of scope and, scope and scale. Um, and then we asked members of the Wiltshire Climate Group to submit any firms they know locally who they think might be potentially big emitters of gases that impact upon the environment. And from that, we got another 43 firms put forward. Um, done some work on that recently, and we've now got a list of about 50 named organisations who we think may be potentially large big hitter firms and worthwhile doing some investigation. Um, if you want to have a look at that list, because I won't put up a massive list now or everybody be going, why is they there? Why aren't they there? If you're really interested, give me a shout and I'll give you access to the list. Yeah. The other piece of work we're doing, because it's all well and good saying, go out there and do some research. If we're going to do that with a small team of volunteer business researchers, and also if we aim to produce a report that has some validity and credibility, I think it's quite important that we do our homework in how do you answer the question, is the firm I'm currently investigating having a major impact on the environment? And is there evidence that the managers and the stakeholders in the organisation are trying to do their bit about the way they mitigate and change their business activity to produce a much lower carbon future? So there's been quite some good work done on this to come up with what we're calling the business assessment matrix, whole list of questions, a scoring system, which gives them a red, a amber or green on how well we think their policy or actions are. And then the idea is that we use publicly available data about the organisations to populate that matrix for each firm. That way, if you have several researchers working on it, if they all follow a fairly regimented method, 
you can compare them together. You know, you don't want one person doing one school report and one person doing another. We've got that together now. We're testing that over the next two weeks. Um, what I'm also discovering is as we go through the work, we're building up quite a useful database of all the different resources and guides and standards and certificates and stuff that's out there. And that in itself is quite a useful thing that you could take into an organization and say, look at all the things you could be using, a massive toolbox of data. Mm. Just to give you a feel for this business assessment matrix, this is the type of thing. This is the section on policy at the moment we put together. I think anyone who's got a bit of knowledge and experience of the way businesses work could go through this and assess whether what they were seeing meant there was no evidence at all brilliant bit of evidence or actually a bit sketchy so the red amber green the big problem i've got i think at the moment is willing volunteers um there's a job to be done um we've got a list of 50 organizations my initial guess is it could take one to two days to do a decent job of investigating one organization you know, for a really small firm, it might take 10 minutes, but if it's a large complex organization, like the Ministry of Defense installations across the county, doing a decent assessment of what they're doing, the scope and scale and what the admissions are could be really pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm guessing that a couple of days of research per firm, we've got a list of 50 firms, because I kind of think, if you get 50 firms and you wrote a report on that, it'd have a little bit of statistical validity. You know, four out of the 50 were in agricultural and of those, this many were doing a good job and this many are doing a bad job. Um, I'd like to try and get the research covered over the next few months, May, June, July, August, maybe into September. And my guess is that to, to, to make it feel like a, manageable piece of work for each volunteer you need about 10 people really you know five firms each that's still quite a commitment per person so that's where i'm stuck at the moment because realistically i've got myself a chap called ken carley margaret's offered to help um jez jez jeremy wire i think a guy paul paul card who was helping out has got a job so he suddenly got less time right Right, so that's it really. So if you want to be a citizen ecol no mist researcher, please give me a shout because there's plenty to be done here. But I think I'm picking up as a general thread overall. This is the bit, the hub for every project, isn't it? Getting on and actually doing the work, get people to do it. Yeah. I'll stop now. I'll stop sharing. That was it. Any questions, anyone? Yeah. And thanks, Keith. I mean, it's a really, really good well-structured approach and I think we all appreciate that and um, to your point about volunteers I think that's that's the, the constraint we all face personally I, I would like to help you I'll do a I'll do at least one of those uh, I, I used to be a management consultant so I sort of know about how to do those sort of things so I will do 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 some so let's talk about that separately but um, and if anyone else wants to just just get in touch with um, it's probably something we just need to start going because the, the issue is going to be where we get the data from but um, we, we we shall see and we should get started on it on that point about resources before we start talking about topic groups um we one thing we've been talking about some time in the steering group is is getting some sort of paid um resource to support us um because we think there's so many great ideas and so much for us to do but we're all volunteers, as we all know, and um, actually just even following up on the things we are trying to do is, is, is a struggle. So we're looking at um, applying for grants and things to, um, to try and get a paid, even part-time paid sort of administrator, stroke analyst, stroke researcher type person. Um, in the meantime, though, we have got a bit of money in the bank and that could help us sort of pump prime that sort of role. And I'd also like to just suggest if, if as we usually do at our members meetings, if Christian could just put up the link to the donate button, even if you just want to donate a few, few quid, it all helps to just chop up the coffers, um, which supports things like paying for um, 
the, the leaflets we do and the events we hold and that sort of thing. And if it can go towards resources, that would be really helpful. So Christian's put the um, link in the chat there. Do you want to say something, Christian? No, no, just very quickly, as your treasurer, um, mm. it, it would be really useful to have a bit more money. We, we are on the verge of, of as, as, as spending quite a bit of money uh, mm. employing someone, hopefully. Um, the, the best way uh, is if you can click on that, on that link and uh, what we're hoping for in, in the longer term is to have a suggested subscription type thing for WCA, a fiver a month or something like that. We, we, we won't insist on it, obviously, mm. uh, but it'd be really helpful. Um, so I think at a later meeting, we'll probably have a discussion as to whether, you know, what's a, a suggested kind of subscription. But whatever you fancy, a monthly rate would be really helpful. And you can do it on there. A few of our members already do. So I see on the third of the month, Several people donate on a, a, a you know, it comes through a fiver. Thank you very much. You know who you are. So thank you very much to those who, who do that. Um, there we go. Thank you. And the, the other thing just to say on that, we've done some research on grant giving organisations. So there are there are grants out there that would probably support the sort of thing. In fact, I spoke to Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy and they have a grant fund which could support at least temporarily a position. So um, there, there are ones where we're, we're going to follow it up at the steering group because I think that's the sort of thing we must do to sort of just release our capacity a little bit. Okay, turning to topic groups updates. Um, Andrew, you had a couple of suggestions you wanted to float on, on that heading. Yes, I, I think we're pretty much, um, we, we, we could launch a food and shopping topic group and we we could even provisionally arrange um, a, a first meeting, say a fortnight from today, because um, Julian um, knows about uh, a, an initiative, a website called Take the Jump, and um, quite a lot of us feel that food and shopping are are crucial to the climate emergency. So I could address that. Um, I think almost a dozen people raised their hands when we floated this uh, a month ago. So um, why wait? Huh? Um, food, of course, um, moving to plant-based diets, um, looking at the carbon footprint of your food is in, it, it has a big impact. Mm -hmm. Shopping, especially of manufactured consumer goods from countries that still burn a lot of coal, such as China, India, Vietnam. Go home, look through your wardrobe at the labels on your clothes, look at all your gadgets. Um, I think a lot of people might like to start framing initiatives. And um, so why not um, mm -hmm. arrange a provisional meeting and circulate the membership after, uh, after to, uh, right now or, or at steering group tomorrow? Um, would anyone uh, want to come to such a meeting and, and get involved? I, I think it's not gonna be just about me and my eating and shopping habits, but reaching out sort of politically to the community in Wiltshire. Wiltshire Council has a, does spend a lot of money on food and, and non-foods. Mm -hmm. um, so there are quite large scale things we could be trying to do. And I agree with the comments when people say, well, mm -hmm. if we're gonna reduce um, uh, the production of meat in Wiltshire, let's not just be buying it from Brazil. Yeah, absolutely. But I think we're pushing it to an open door when, when consumers are buying more and more plant-based milk, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarah, you got your hand up. Yeah. Uh, I just put my hand up because I'm keen to be involved. <laughs> Great, excellent. That's good. That's one. And I think I saw Margaret as well. Anyone else? Have, have, have you got a list already, Andrew, of, from the last meeting? You just muted yourself, okay? Uh, no, was it recorded? No. Uh, there was that moment when some hands waved. It was towards the end. Okay, we can put a um, we can put a note out on the next email update. If if you, yeah, and you've had it. There's a Kate in the um, chat as well. On that. And, Good. Okay, and the other group that's yeah. almost ready to launch would be an arts group, oh. um, visual arts and performing arts. We've identified quite a number of people, and one or two people who even might volunteer because of course the group can't just be the people who love it mm. but one or two people who are willing to run it mm. Mm. and that can make a huge contribution to our public face 
Mm. And I know this, I know a lot of artists who are really, really keen mm. to mm. work with nature and to and to for their work to express the climate emergency and, and nature and those commitments. Yeah, yeah. Um, it can be can be a very powerful way of getting the message across to in a different way um, from the sort of very rational sort of arguments that are very important, but don't often engage people emotionally. So, so Kate, yeah, you heard Kate's just in the first, so we'll capture that in the chat. Thanks very much. Super. Andrew, while we've got you, is there anything you want to say about um, Transport Group? Uh, yeah, we are struggling to form this um, active travel forum for the, uh, for Wiltshire and Swindon, um, which will be a, uh, sort of sp spun out from Wiltshire Climate Alliance as such and involve all kinds of stakeholder groups, disabled ramblers, horse riders, um, cyclists addressing the countryside situation. And um, I think we're in, we're just about ready to start um, reporting Wiltshire Council to the government, to the Active Travel Commission for the way it, plonks random cycle lanes down without consulting people or tears them out without consulting people. And uh, some of us are busy working um, to give input to the national highways, um, M4 to the Dorset Coast Connectivity Study, which is supposed to be a recipe for more road building, but should it be on the A350 or the A36? Um, we obviously want to argue that it shouldn't be on those roads because it's not needed. Mm. So we're, 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 we're trying to run fast to stand still on transport. Mm. Good, thank you. Mm. Uh, I think you do some great work there, actually. It's really good. Um, energy, we've talked a lot about energy at the beginning. A lot of that's sort of what we're covering in the energy group. Um, Tony, do you want to just add anything? Or, or Julian, from what you've been doing? Um, just to say, I've been monitoring the, uh, the retrofit Mm. Uh, groups around there seems to be uh, quite a few more sort of popping up um, Somerset are doing something in an online event which might be worth thinking about um, emulating um, so it seems to be lots of lots of counties around us are, are doing things within the county itself there there are a couple of things coming forward um, but, but still waiting really for more something more definite Nada Valley uh, Community Energy are doing something in June. Um, I don't think Maggie's on today, is she? I haven't seen her, no. Because um, she's leading on that. Um, Great Bedwin, I've mentioned before, mm. have got some funding to, to look at the village and do some surveys of the housing there. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on with that. Um, and that will be probably be reporting back or able to report something in um, uh, in autumn. We have obviously had the Sherston thing, which was mentioned earlier, which was very good. And I think on the back of that, it sounds like Melksham, Malmesbury, Devizes, and perhaps even Pusey might be doing similar things. And talking with Shirley, um, who's based in Melksham there, I think there's there's certainly things that could be shared, the learning from that, the, uh, the Sherston event. Definitely. And, and perhaps even, a, you know, a, a sort of a travelling show, uh, uh, certain elements of that could go around um, to cover the county. Yeah, and the people who organised that said that they'd give me a sort of ready-made kit of what they did so, so we can use that as a starter yeah. for other yeah. local groups. So if you're, if you're in a local group and you think you'd like to do something in your own community, then let us know that you don't have to start from scratch again because a lot of good stuff already been done. Yep. Um, where else? I think, um, well, I think, I don't know if Julian's had a chance to upload some of the stuff, but um, uh, yeah, I've, I've done a list of all the, the events that are going on mm. um, around us. So there's plenty of things happening. They, uh, June seems to be a popular month. Mm. So uh, keep your diaries free for that. Great. Excellent. Um, so we haven't got Bill here to talk about land use, although I think the, the incinerator is quite a big part of that. Um, youth? Youth. Uh, yeah. I could, 
Sorry, say again. Yeah, sorry, I could, I could say something a little bit on land as well. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not so much of the group as a whole, but it was, I don't know whether other people have been aware of this, but certainly in um, Royal Wooden Bassett and Cricklade Area Board, last week we had the first uh, environmental group forum. Mm -hmm. um, and that's convened by the, the Area Board. Mm. Um, but really trying to try and coordinate um, the, the various environmental groups and organisations within the area mm. um, to focus on particular projects. I suppose low-hanging fruit really sort of is the, is the target at the moment. Now, it's, it's run by um, uh, the councillor there in, in Royal Wood and Bassett, um, who I think is, is, as far as I know, is very, is very sympathetic to that, so that's good. Um, but do you know how much is part of Wiltshire trying to be seen to be doing things? I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, at least it's a chance for everyone to, to talk together. And I think I know certainly what Bassett are doing quite a bit mm -hmm. around verges and cycling as well is one of their, their big things, as well as some tree planting. And um, and certainly in my parish, we've um, I sort of convened a, a wildlife and nature and a nature recovery uh, group. Um, had a very encouraging event uh, last uh, on the bank holiday, and it's it is actually very it's amazing what people are doing out there. And I think nature is a really good way of getting into opening conversations with people yeah. Yeah. around uh, around the environment and, and into climate change. I think as a starter, you know, then then the interconnectivity of all these issues uh, becomes apparent. So um, that's something we're working on. We're working with landowners and farmers, obviously a very important part of this whole thing, mm. um, and uh, under huge pressures themselves and changes. So uh, it's trying to work hand in hand with them. Yeah, that point about the area boards actually is a good one. It's something we've talked about in previous meetings, and I think a lot of the area boards are now getting these environmental climate change groups going. There's certainly the caution one has, Chippenham has. In fact, at that event on Thursday, on Saturday, I spoke to the councillor from the Malmesbury Area Board, and I think they're getting one going there. So um, I don't know if other people are involved in their local area boards and are seeing this happening, but they should be. In, in, in principle, all 20, I think that 20 area boards should be having organising their own local climate change groups so um if they're not in your area get onto your local chance uh, uh, council and ask them why not and there's there's good working examples of that around in other places okay a uh, youth conference then christian uh, youth yep. so uh, first of all thank you very much for those the um the, who are donating money is coming through on my little box here so thank you for those Thanks everyone well. for that. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, um, uh, youth youth group. So, um, uh, just a little bit of history. So, the, the youth group. When we, when we first started, we realised we had very few young people. And to be honest, tonight we got very few young people again. Um, and so, we one way of, of getting more young people engaged was to have uh, to give them an opportunity to have their voices heard uh, when talking to the councillors. Uh, and so we had that first youth conference um, uh, back in 2020. Then we had another one in 21. Uh, and that the recording of that video of that conference was seen about 12, uh, 1300 times. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it was uh, heavily viewed. Uh, and we had about a total of about 50 people come. Uh, the youth group has straggled off a little bit. And so we're... we're uh, seeing less activity uh, amongst the, the, the youth group. So the aim again was to have another youth conference um, uh, as soon as possible, really, to get more young people uh, involved. Uh, Karis and Tess, uh, who are the youth group uh, leaders, have uh, been involved in, in inviting all the councillors and so on. The, uh, they went for the date, well, we all went for the date for the 24th of May, which isn't ideal, um, but uh, no date from now till God knows when uh, is ideal. It's either holidays or this, that or the other. There's always a problem and you can continually delay it and have it further on down the road. So the decision was to press ahead with the 24th of May with a view to having a, a follow-up one uh, in, in uh, October, November 
to tie in with COP20, what's it going to be now, 28? Or whatever it is, the, the, the next kind of COP27, okay, <laughs> the, the next um, um, uh, one along. So, um, and we've also had discussions with um, Somerset and Dorset with a view to making it a bit of a competitive thing as to how many councillors can you get coming to yours and, and how many get to ours. So the councillors now are aware that this is a bit of a, uh, um, it's ha going to happen not simultaneously, but a reasonably similar time with um, our neighbouring uh, areas. So, uh, so far we have 27 councillors signed up to come to the conference on the 24th of May, but only two young people. Oh. Only two young people. All right, so this is where I need everybody's help, okay? So in the link here, okay, is the link to register uh, young people uh, to come to the conference, okay? Please, can you just send it to your nephews, nieces, grandchildren, children, etc. 24th of May is not ideal because some A levels and O levels, etc., are happening in there, but we're just going to be an hour or two, and that's about it. Uh, let's get, get lots of young people coming to it. So the link is on in the chat to, to get them to, to click on that, fill in the form quickly, and then uh, would that that be be great. And that's uh, on the website. Really embarrassing if we have. 40 count if the councillors outweigh the number of young people attending mm -hmm. okay so if you can influence your schools or local communities or whatever to get young people involved that'd be really good yeah i, I think i sent you an email through on from someone suggesting a school thing so hopefully tess or someone follow that up yeah 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 mm -hmm. okay great um so the final item on the agenda was just any updates anyone wants to do from their own local um groups or indeed anything that's just on your mind I don't want to have sort of a whole great long aob thing but just basically what local groups are doing and things you you'd like to share with the wider group so um yeah di um sorry i'm already bored the breakout group with this um xr salisbury are hosting a showing of once you know the climate it's a documentary on climate uh issues it, we are doing a free screening. We've been given the chance to use the Guild Hall um, as part of the Council's climate agenda. They're making the space available once a month. Um, if anyone knows anyone, I'll put or try to put the PDF for this in the on the Facebook group, if I may. Uh, it is free. It is seven o'clock on Thursday the 12th. If anyone knows anyone, um, we, well, when I say it's free, it's free to everyone who turns up. We are funding it ourselves, um, a handful of us. Um, I've got leaflets to be flyers that I'm starting to put out around town. Um, so if anyone knows anyone want to come, we'd just like to get, just get as many people as possible, make this a talk, talking point. Um, and we thought maybe that would help people. It's interesting for people to for dialogue and everything. And it's not XR sort of gluing themselves to anything. It's just literally a free screening. So that's um, that's the first thing we're doing. And we're also we've got another um action against rock hopper who are based in salisbury um, and are one of the companies suing the suing the italian government actually for lo uh, potential lost profits over its um, banning them from digging so it's again part of the energy charter treaty and the um interstates dispute settlement mechanisms of the climate courts um so that's got coming up on the 18th but the big one for us at the moment is the 12th of may this film so um, I will put the PDF out, and if anyone can share that with anyone they think would be interested, would be really grateful. Thank you. And Dan. do come along yourselves as well. Free night out. <laughs> if it's a good film, you'll be glued to the screen. It's um, it's one. It's a French director called Emmanuel Kaplan, uh, and it's kind of his journey from sort of discovery and what he's done, and and you know, it's it's. It's, in, it's inspiring. I won't say it's entertaining as such, but it's I've seen it. It's um, it, but it's won a lot of awards. It's yeah, not, yeah. you know. So anyway, just if it, I'll put it out Absolutely. there. If anyone's interested, either contact me or it'll be on all our Facebook groups and everything. Um, and I'll try and put the PDF up so anyone can access it who's interested and wants to share it again. So um, great. Yeah, we can share it around the WCA Facebook group. Yeah, it can go anywhere. Yeah, it'd be great. Thank you. It'd just be nice. The council, let, again, it's like you're saying, the council let us at the hall. It's slightly embarrassing if, yeah, you know, yeah. it's the usual suspect sat there with a bag of popcorn and nobody else. Yeah, with a bag <laughs> of popcorn. Richard, <laughs> your own popcorn, sorry. <laughs> Richard. 
Yeah, just very quickly uh, from Nada Community Energy, um, no, nothing firmed up yet, but we're looking at hopefully um, doing another share offer. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, at some point. Don't know whether it's going to happen or not, but just to flag it up so that uh, get your checkbooks ready. Yeah, we need some money. <laughs> but it is an investment, of course. With a return on it, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks. Uh, Andrew. Okay, Bradford and Avon Climate Friendly Group, Jez has left the room. Um, they're, they're busy. Um, we're doing energy surveys uh, with the council, town council. Um, there's been a huge consultation on the future of travel in Bradford and Avon. It seems that it's that we now, a Wiltshire Council, want to come and say, oh, well, here's the one-way system we wanted to give you years ago, which will actually encourage motor traffic. Mm -hmm. So we've got some huge political problems there. Um, but um, we hope to get a grant from Wessex Water Foundation to um, research a traffic free route between Bradford and Trowbridge. Um, all happening really um, in sunny Bradford and Avon. Oh, and I want to add one thing um, for Keith's benefit in a way. Um, we've, in, in across Wiltshire, we're trying to work with CPRE. The, the local plan review is going to come hitting us like a bombshell later this year and um, we're trying to get volunteers to do um, surveys of brownfield sites that haven't been listed in the official brownfield sites register. National planning guidance suggests that we it can also include underutilized sites that are not literal brownfield sites. So Keith, the business engagement thing is fantastic. It is not the only thing that desperately needs volunteers um, who will go out this time you just have to look at a field and fill in a form so uh it's not too onerous and uh i want to flag up that uh, the census will be coming out with its first results later this month or early in in the summer say june and that has an impact on the demography of wiltshire is it still rural what are we going to do with housing um what's the makeup of the population are they using cars we'll have we'll be able to um suck a lot of information about the out of the new census the last one was 10 or more years ago and um we ought to get ahead of the game and look at that in the climate alliance okay thanks andrew G uh christian thanks yeah. yeah just a quick reminder so i'm going to share screen for a second mm -hmm. um so on the website uh our website so if you go to the events page and click events uh, this is the page that you get and you get a calendar with all sorts of things that are happening and so on. And the reason I put that there is just to, to remind you to to send us a poster or whatever you've got uh, and we'll I'll, I'll stick it on there. It's not instantaneous. I'll try when I get a moment to, to put it on there, but it's uh, it's it's good. And and then I'll talk about Salisbury Transition City is mm -hmm. got uh, a big event uh, that is planned for the 17th of uh, September uh, in Queen Elizabeth Gardens. We've probably got about 35 stalls, various different community groups involved in there, a couple of stages with entertainment and all sorts, um, and some local businesses. So I was thinking, um, Bean, I might ask if, if you fancied having a, uh, a representation there, maybe, or, or whatever. So if anybody's interested in, in coming to it or having a stall there, uh, let us know. Uh, there'll probably be about 50 stores all together in the park, which would be really good. Um, yeah, I've been before and it's really good. Oh, thank you very much. Who was that? Mark. Mark. No, no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It's all powered from an electric car, which is even more fun. Um, so no, no fossil fuel use there uh, or, or as little as possible. Julian. Just a very quick yeah. One of the events on the website, which Chris was just mentioning, is next Wednesday, 12th of May, which is an in-person uh, get together with a land reuse group uh, on a farm, uh, Yatesbury House far Organic Farm near uh, Khan. So uh, just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. That's what I wanted to say. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Anyone else got anything from their local groups they want to share? Okay. Great. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. As usual, really interesting discussion and um, lots of great things for us to follow up on. And uh, you know, just keep keep posted. Keep us posted. We'll send an email update out shortly with um, just links to all, all that sort of stuff. <coughs> and 
just we just keep up keep up the good fight. I think essentially, so uh, what yeah. we've got to do, um, even though sometimes it feels like uh, we're not getting there. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've got to have a drink of water. Um, okay, that's probably it. Unless anyone's got anything else.